All right, so let's go back to that um, doc that we had. Um, some of the things that we want to talk about, um, so um, inserting pictures. Um, a lot of times in our work with students, they love inserting pictures. And so when we have them get pictures, if they're going to search the web, we want to make sure that we don't have them um, take, you know, pictures that are um, not common um, that tools that they can have. So make sure they check out if that's a picture that can be shared, can be replicated. Um, so if they're putting it in, they can just go straight to the images here, insert, and then they have um, options that they can have for their insert. But one, I mean, I think a lot of kids know how to insert images, but we just really need to be more respectful of making sure that these, they have the image privileges and the sharing rights. And sometimes we kind of overlook that if it's going to be something that we have them do, but um, we want to make sure that we respect the fact that someone made the picture and do we have permission to use it? Okay, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is teaching students how to do tables. Um, and I know that um, it's something that we use. I mean, a lot of people do a KWL chart or something like that, and we all have that in there. But teaching students how to, to do tables so that they can provide you with the content that you want. So maybe you have essential questions that you want them to do, and you put in the directions what you want them to say, but they need to have a format in order to do that. Having students use tables helps streamline um, and make sure that they answer all the questions that you want them to do, and they have it in a format that they know that they're accountable for giving it to you and the, the way that they um, are supposed to. And likewise, if they're um, having to maybe do a survey for people um, and that's a part of their research, that that's something that you're able to show them how to use tables also. So I encourage you to have your students use tables and teach them that tool. All right, we already talked about comments. So I'm going to go to the research tool. Um, and so um, sometimes we are kind of go through the flow with some of our stuff that we have for Google, but um, over the summer, they had an opportunity to um, update some things. So I would um, encourage you to kind of go through and see what's different. So our Explore tool is here down at the bottom. They just have an icon. And when we click that icon, automatically it allows us to search within our document. So no more going out, going to the plus, having to search out. So if we're searching photosynthesis, I should have picked a, um, a, a shorter word. It keeps it keeps I keep on touching it, so I apologize. Um, so within our doc, we can um, search and go to the web and have students have the content um, in linear vi vision of their what they're working on. So they don't have to toggle back and forth. But um, in order to do that, our explore tool is already accessible to us right at the bottom with this icon. That was a new, um, a new thing that they added. Um, having templates. Um, a lot of times we have our docs and uh, we maybe have something that we've curated from previous years, but we want students to answer. And I understand that you guys have iPads. And so for me, that was like really transformative to have an opportunity to use my previous content that I used in um, years past to pull it up as a Google Doc, but I wanted students to answer on it. So as I save this, So as I have this topic, photosynthesis, and I apply it to my students, I would go ahead and make this bar bigger so that they would have it. I probably would um, center that and maybe I would put in no, want to know, learn. And, but I wanna give this to my class so that they can um, answer and have a way to reply. So, and I wanna make sure that um, they don't ruin the original copy. So, especially with having an iPad and being able to send it to them, 
we can share it, save it as the PDF. And when we do that, then that automatically has it in a format that we can upload to our um, device for our students and they can simply write on it or add a text box and type in it. And I really think that having our documents as a PDF, um, it um, really helps students to maintain their content and they're able to, we can maintain our content and have it be, have it not be ruined or um, manipulated um, in ways that we can't save an edit for another time. Um, one thing that our students do um, to make sure it's collaborative and make, and we talked about that before, but sharing it and making sure that your rights are um, protected. So making sure that you have who you wanted to share with and that you have it um, opened up to the correct people. Um, um, having students be able to do that and just sharing the link with you. If that is something that um, you want them to turn in, knowing how to get the link and sharing that with you and being able to turn it in um, in their Google Classroom or wherever you would like for them to do that. 